Hi ladies and gentlemen, I hope everybody's doing good. Uh, I got a special one here for you, but before we get started, um, let's just give a little spirituality, some prayers um, to a few people that I know of in the knife community. I'm not going to name names, but um, they're going through some hard times health-wise, and um, they were all there when I had my issues. So just asking for some uh, group, um, some spiritual el electricity to help them get through it. And maybe I'll get into more of that later on, but um, here's a tribute to them. Um Let's move down here. We're going to have Superfly assist us in this. Nice, sweet lockback. <laughs> uh, me and Stuart Harvey were talking about this. Uh, I don't think it's the video I did on this has broke 100 views yet. But hey, man, I like this thing. I mean, if you're a knife nut, how can you not like Superfly? So, made in Japan in the 80s. Japanese steel, hard as heck to sharpen. But we're going to keep that as we show this. I'm going to pull back. And we'll see. It's Case XX, Bowie Hunter, Survival Knife and Scabbard. WR Case and Sons Company, Bradford, Pennsylvania. Now, this is a design that Case actually built for um, pilot survival in World War II. I didn't know that. I came across reading that um, as I was trying to date this one. This one um, is anywhere from 1967 to 1969. Because in 1970, Case went with the dot system to date their knives. And in 1967 was the first time that they put the Davy Crockett etch on. So let's go ahead, slide the sleeve off. So remember, this is 1960, or 1967, 1968, or 1969. Um, let's put this off to the side where it doesn't get crushed. And you can see the box is still in pretty good condition. And look at what Davy Crockett has in the right hand. who also was a good friend of uh, Jim Bowie, James Bowie. They died together at um, the Alamo in 1836. And that's why this knife is called the 1836 Bowie. Um, made in the USA solid brass guard tempered van crow steel which is a stainless i believe handmade in the usa um and there's a little thing you can read colonel jim bowie of texas and you'll see the case bowie is a reproduction of one we made as a survival and fighting knife during world war ii um so there's there's that now the very the most awesome thing besides the knife on this is the scabbard And we got some dust in there from that paper. So we'll clean that up a little bit. The buyer I got this from was a really nice gentleman. Um, 
Jim, who is selling off his collection because um, he's retiring. And, of course, the economy's hitting people hard, so he's selling some of his best pieces. And I'll leave a link in the description in, in the description box to get to his eBay channel. And maybe you guys will see something you like. But now this is genuine leather. Really supple leather. Brass um, tip and edges. Beautiful stitching. And that's what you call a scabbard. Boys and girls. Still in magnificent shape. Yes, I paid a lot for this. But that's okay, because it's something I wanted for the collection. This, when it's all said and done, and there's a uh, charity auction. This one will probably be the prime piece. And as you'll see right up here, Case XX USA 1836. That's the year that both Jim Bowie and Davy Crockett were killed at the Alamo. Um, but you'll see that there's no dots here. So this is pre-1970. Double fuller. And an awesome... Davy Crockett etch. Let's see if we can get it to look really good there. It's actually got a pretty good edge on it. Scared I'm going to cut my hand. Of course, you got the brass backing, brass guard, brass pins. And this is quite common, I've noticed. Um, it's not from the guy's greasy hands. It's, they just fade. It's that uh, synthetic phenolic, I think is the way it's pronounced. But there might be a way to clean it. I'm going to look into it. I'm not even going to try um, any soap and water or anything because I don't want to ruin it. Look at that edge or that shine. It's uh, the blade is nine and three eighths, fourteen inches overall. Which, if you did the math, I'm gonna do it the easy way. Handle is four and a half inches, and you'll see. Blade is nine and three eighths. Now, am I going to hang this on my new buoy wall? Uh, I don't think so. This one I might just wrap up. Because although this is a stainless steel, um, I've seen plenty of them that get ratted out pretty quick. Yeah, that's got a good edge on it. Wonder if it'll cut. It will cut. Let's see. Actually, not too bad. Factory edge for many, many years. Up by the toe there, it's pretty sharp. So, but anyway. Um, 1967 would be prime because it would be the first year that they put the um, 
Davy Crockett etch on. But it's either a 67, 68, or 69. <laughs> Almost makes you want to go out and start chopping some logs. But we won't do it with this one. That's what the Tonto's for. Just simply gorgeous. So I'm going to leave Jim's uh, link to Jim's um, eBay store. And it looks like he's a case collector. So if you're looking for vintage case knives, keep an eye on his uh, channel or his store. And he tells me he's going to be selling a lot of his um, collection in the very near future. Um, since he's going into retirement and the economy's not helping him out to enjoy his golden years with the inflation. God, I love this thing. Kind of speechless. Usually I'm trembling when I get a knife I like, but. Get a little bit of old glory back there. So until next time, my friends, take care. Peace. Bye-bye.